Yo guys, how's it going? Got my Minnesota shirt on. It is one week until college football season. Um, I read your reviews and I am trying to fix the basement microphone. I mean, it's a sound system, but sometimes when you have like a microphone, you have a sound system, it's difficult to sometimes figure out answers and sometimes it's easier just with a Yeti microphone, you know, that I kind of have off here to the side. Um, to do the videos and just kind of record it in my regular studio. So um, what I'm going to say is I've had some time to let the game kind of marinate today from the Buffalo Bills. And it's very disappointing because I do like Josh Allen. Everybody is going to have their biases. Everybody's going to have players that they pull for in the NFL. And if I got to keep it real with you guys, he was shaky today. There were no first downs. Um, he was getting sacked a lot, and I've watched Josh Allen games like that. When the guy was at Wyoming, there were some games where they couldn't move the ball at all, and it was feast or famine with Josh Allen um, at Wyoming. If you watched the game logs, if you watched him play Oregon, if you watched the Iowa game, you know the guy made great throws down the field in a lot of cases. Um, but today, I, I was... You know, 4 o'clock, Sunday, um, primetime game on Fox, Charles Davis doing the game. And I just expected Josh Allen to, to go out and win the job. I just witnessed in person Sam Darnold winning his quarterback job. And Josh had a chance today to do it. And I believe if Josh went out there, because he's been perfect in this preseason, if Josh went out there against the number one team, against Terrell Austin and those Bengals, and if he went out there and Josh Allen was able to move the ball, was able to score maybe one or two touchdowns and have a decent performance out there in week three, then I believe he would have won the quarterback job. But today, it wasn't that Josh played a terrible game he did not have a chance, and the poor kid got absolutely mauled. The offensive line is one of the worst offensive lines that I think we're going to see in the league, and it could be an, an offensive line that could be an all-time terrible offensive line. Vlad Ducasse had his problems with Miles Garrett last week or with the Cleveland Browns defensive line, and A.J. McCarron got hurt last week. Josh Allen last week was sharper. He, good quarterbacks can make their offensive line look better. The running game did not help at all. And Josh Allen, when he hung in the pocket, he did hang in there. He was always getting crowded on every drop back. He had one throw to Clay, but other than that, he was very rushed. He was, it, it, well, he was very just uncomfortable, and understandably so. It was a very uncomfortable game to watch Josh Allen just get slayed to the turf. And against the Cleveland or against the um, Browns and against other competition, Allen was able to use his foot speed to evade the pocket. But I'll tell you, I think Carl Lawson played at Auburn. He was a great pick by the Bengals. He looked fantastic. Geno Atkins has been a beast for a long time out of Georgia. He was getting to the quarterback. You know, uh, Carlos Dunlap was just mauling the, you know, Mills was mauling Ducasse. The centers are terrible, whether it be Gro, whether it be the other guy that he's battling. Um, I, I forget the name, Bell something. When you look at the Bills, you know, with incognito, with with every situation that's going on, their offensive line is just so in dire situation, and it's so putrid that Josh Allen is going to get absolutely wrecked, you know, if he were to start the season. And then you combine that with Kelvin Benjamin, who's out here spending his time blaming Cam Newton, but he hasn't really been able to separate versus, you know, cornerbacks, especially sharp cornerbacks. The whole team today looked completely lost. Sean McDermott, even the defense, John Ross, Tyler Boyd, they made Dalton look like a, a freaking Marino out there today, and they made John Ross look great. Vontae Davis was messing up. It was a sad, sad performance today. 
But let's talk about Josh Allen and Buffalo. So Buffalo was a 9-7 and team. They were a 9-7 and team that had an easy schedule, that were very opportunistic on defense and got a lot of turnovers and squeaked out a lot of games. And at 9-7, and that's typically not a record where you should be getting into the playoffs. But because Baltimore choked and the AFC was terrible, they were labeled a playoff team. And they got absolutely wrecked by Jacksonville when they arrived into the playoffs. They had zero chance to to go and make noise, or they had zero chance as a six seed to go out and win the Super Bowl or win the AFC. So the whole playoff team thing... It shouldn't be applicable at all because this offensive line with Wood retiring, with Incognito leaving and doing whatever he's doing now, you know, with Shady McCoy being very old with, you know, some legal situations in Atlanta that he's still trying to deal with. Charles Clay's old, you know, is Zay Jones being developed by the coaching staff? Is he going to be worth the second round price of admission that you got for him? All of this, Vontae Davis is older. It's just, is Shaq Lawson going to develop? It's like Buffalo, and with Buffalo's schedule, I I think they could be one of the worst teams in the NFL, like a 4-5 win team. And since he just tore them apart. So I guess we're not, if we were going to overreact or react accordingly to a preseason game, they didn't belong on the same field as a Marvin Lewis Bengals team. That was an okay team. Maybe the Bengals are going to be a playoff team. Maybe they're looking really, really sharp and good. And they are aggressive. And they do have some talent. But the point of this video, what I wanted to say, and it's kind of a longer video because today was just a complete shit show from the Buffalo Bills. There's really no positives you could take away from the performance. It was one of the worst. It was an eye-opening performance in how atrocious the game was to, to take in. Made me sick to my stomach for Josh Allen to see the poor guy just get absolutely torn apart. Now, could Josh Allen, could he cr- clean some things up? Yes. Does he sometimes panic a little too early? Yes. Is some of it his fault? A little bit is his fault, okay? Did Peterman play better? He did, but Allen has the arm talent. Peterman, he throws a football that's going to get intercepted by a lot of people, okay? McCarron, I believe, is better than Peterman. You know, McCarron went into the NFL. He was great in college, McCarron, but he played on the Bengals. He had a positive winning record. He almost won a playoff game. You know, this is a guy with some experience. I still think McCarron, if healthy, you know, is better than Peterman. So the way the Bills start the season, you go to Baltimore week one. That's going to be a tough game. Baltimore is a pretty good defense, but not incredible defense. You then have the Chargers, which is a bad matchup. Even though the Chargers have to fly east and they're not a great team playing east, the Chargers still have Ingram and Bosa. And they're going to go ahead and rush the, the you know, Marshall Newhouse or whoever the Bills are going to be having trying to protect with no tackles anymore. So it's going to be a rough game, the Chargers game for the Bills and whoever's quarterbacking that game. Then the Bills, I think they have maybe one more game before they play Minnesota and the Green Bay Packers. So they play Packers, and then I believe they have Houston in there as well at Houston, which is a dead loss. So looking at the Bills' schedule, the Bills' first seven games are murderers row. They have to go to the NFC North twice. They have to go to Green Bay and Minnesota, and of course we know Minnesota has Everson Griffin, Brian Robeson, uh, you know Daniel Hunter, guys like Linval Joseph, Really, really good down lineman. Sheldon Richardson's over there now. That that game's just that game's gonna be just awful. And then the Packers, Aaron Rodgers is gonna shred apart Vontae Davis in the secondary. And then, you know, the, the Green Bay Packers have a much improved secondary and the linebacking core is very good. And then you have to go to Lambeau, not an easy place to play a game, even in September. So for Josh Allen, do you want to give him that? Do you want to send him to Minnesota? Do you want him to play Baltimore? Do you want him to play J.J. Watt and Merciless and go to Houston? 
The way that you should handle this if you're Buffalo is Josh Allen is a long-term investment. And you don't want just you don't want losing the creep into the guy's head. You want him to experience, you know, a regular season game. The guy I think is only 21 years old. If I were the Buffalo Bills, I would play him at Indianapolis or bring him home. I would sub him in, I would sub him in halfway through the game in Indianapolis. And then back home on Monday Night Football versus the Patriots, you will sell out Ralph Wilson. So that's what I would do. Because then the second half of the schedule just gets a lot easier. You start to play the AFC East. You start to play Dolphins. Start to play New England, actually, which doesn't have an incredible, incredible defense as we saw last year. So you play Patriots. You play Dolphins, Jets. You get to play all your your you know usual foes. And you can get Josh acquainted to the division. You could bring in Allen. The team might start 1-7, and 2-6, and six, whatever, possibly 0-4, oh, 8. And then Josh Allen could come in. You could try to win a couple of games, get to 4-5 wins. And then you could go ahead and draft, you know, Greg Little or Jonah Williams. You can go get a center. You can go get some so – you can go spend money on your offensive line. Get that offensive line good. You can draft some running backs. Look at what Denver did. They get they got Phillip Lindsay and Royce Freeman in the draft. Buffalo can do that. And I trust Brandon Bean. I trust Bean can stack the box and can get the – can can really – I trust Brandon Bean and his vision and his plan, okay? And with this offensive line, Josh Allen might even be better in the cold elements than a Josh Rosen who's injury prone. So looking at Josh, it was a tough day today. Wasn't all his fault. It was barely his fault. But really it showed me that for Allen and the way that the schedule is, I would wait till week eight, and this is the model that I would do if I were the Buffalo Bills. Look at Mitchell Trubisky. He came in in week four, and Mitchell was able to take over the team. Mahomes sat out last year. He was able to come in and be the guy. He's able to be the guy this year. You know, you look at Mahomes, Deshaun Watson came in pretty early, you know, when Savage really struggled. So the way I look at it is with this offensive line playing against the ones. You shouldn't throw Josh to the Wolves. You should keep his sanity. You should you should basically keep his morale high. He comes in second half of the year, and then it's his team. And then next offseason, it's his team for the for the future. Okay, you let McCarron go. You try to trade him. You bring in a veteran backup quarterback, which the Bills should have done. You know, you should have brought in your Drew Stanton. You should have brought in the Bradford and the Glennon is even a better situation but or a Josh McCown in Jets is perfect for Sam Darnold and you should have actually made it a good friendly room um but maybe the competition helped him but today was just a horrible game for the Bills maybe it was just a one game thing but the way the offensive line looks there is no reason to believe that this team should not be one of the worst teams in the NFL next year and I would throw caution to, to putting Josh Allen out there early and him just getting blasted by defenses and the Bills losing big and the media piling on. I would throw caution to that. I would honestly start resting him and let's see how the season gets going. All right. Thanks, guys.